if we look at the query columns tab, we see another uh, thing that Brent told us to look out for, multiple operations against the same table. So uh, in addition to execution counts, we have a case here where we actually have uh, clustered index seeks that are happening multiple times against the same index on the same table. Um, in Management Studio, it would be hard to figure that out unless you were um, you know, scrolling around and doing a bubble sort in your head and keeping track of how many times each table was referenced or each index was referenced. And here we can sort by table and sort by index and we can see exactly you know, which tables are referenced multiple times. And the separator between operations is this gray bar. Um, so that can be very useful too. And the last one, this is one of my favorites. This is a series of plans um, that uh, have, a couple of them have missing indexes that are recommended by Management Studio. This comes from the underlying code it, uh, from the DMVs. It doesn't actually come from Management Studio, but um, the way Management no, I, Studio, oh, go ahead. I know how this works because I'm a Microsoft Certified Master. I know how that, if I just create that one index, it, index it's going to make all my queries faster, right? Yes, every time. <laughs> So in this case, what Management Studio does is it sees somewhere in one of these plans that there's a, a missing index that's recommended. And instead of showing it next to the plan that it actually belongs to, it shows it for every single plan. So you see up here, we've got this missing index, create non-clustered index, blah, 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 on bulk, active mail, and bounced. This is a set operation. That's all that's in this plan. It's a set no count on. And then the next, the next plan, same missing index is recommended, bulk after mailing is bounced, et cetera, et cetera. This is an assign. This is just a, a, a scalar operation. There's nothing, there's no plan here. There's nothing going on. Uh, another thing I discovered when I was looking at this is that as you scroll down, you move from plan to plan, the uh, Management Studio gets a little, how should I say, confused about what, uh, what statements belong with which plans. So in this case, it actually has the, the offsets wrong. So we've got a statement here that says that this statement simply says, if at clear, out, at clear timeouts equals one. And then it has this missing index incorrectly assigned again. And then it has all of this code so underneath that. So this, the actual statement that we're talking about is missing. If we look at these plans in Plan Explorer, we can step through and take a look at each of the plans, and when there is an actual missing index, we tell you that instead of telling it to you for the whole thing. And we, act, we also highlight the exact piece of the code that we're talking about, right? So we don't, we don't just show these if operations and the, and the assign operations. We actually show everything that's, that's going on. And then if you right-click this node that says the missing index uh, is, was found, you have this missing index details. When you click on that, you've got the same thing that you would get in Management Studio. To, it gives you the code uh, to create the index. But we put big disclaimers here for a reason, and Brent touched on it before. Just because an index will help this plan does not mean it is a good idea overall. Um, and one final note, another thing that Brent said to look out for was implicit conversions. Uh, this is very true. On the expressions tab over here, we show a lot of the uh, operations, a lot of the expressions that are going on in your plans, and you can easily see things where there are convert implicits going on that you wouldn't see in the text itself. So it makes it very easy to find those without actually going through and manually parsing um, all of the text. So that's about all I have for Plan Explorer right now. Um, I hope I've shown you a few things to make your plan analysis more efficient. So I'm going to hand it over to Steve, who's going to explain a few of the benefits of using this functionality within our full suite of tools. Yeah, thanks, Aaron. Give me uh, just a second, and I'll uh, switch over to uh, make myself the presenter. And uh, we'll take a look at uh, the functionality that is basically taking what you've just uh, walked through uh, and in addition to what's available built into the full product SQL Century Performance Advisor. Um, with uh, version 6 of Performance Advisor, we uh, integrated uh, that functionality in with our pre-existing top SQL collection 
an analysis for your SQL servers. Um, and just to uh, make sure, I've got the uh, the console up on the screen now. Is that showing up okay? Can you guys see that? Quick confirmation. Perfect. Okay, great. So, yeah, a couple of new things that, that are uh, recent additions to the Performance Advisor product that are really centered around uh, query uh, analysis and optimization. Um, Performance Advisor has always provided real-time as well as historical performance analysis showing you resource utilization. I have a, the dashboard up here with my Windows and, and SQL Server information. And there are a couple of new charts that we've added to the dashboard. I'm, I've jumped to a historical time frame uh, from earlier here in my environment. Uh, but we're now actually showing bookmark lookups and forwarded records have a chart for that activity along with backup and, and restore activity. So I can see either in real time or historically when there were queries that, uh, you know, those types of things, bookmark lookups and forwarded records being a common source of, of resource overhead uh, when queries are involving those type of operations. And then we make it easy from this view, this, this complete server view, to, to drill further in to get those kind of details. In fact, I can just, and this has always been available, either from this chart or any of them, you just see a CPU spike or whatever the case, I can highlight uh, that time frame and zoom in or use the jump to menu to drill in to get more details on whatever it is that I'm specifically looking for. Uh, in this case, I've you know, started with uh, highlighting the bookmark uh, lookups that I noticed a spike there in my history. And I could jump right into Top SQL, first of all, which will show me all the um, statements that were running that exceeded my Top SQL thresholds based on duration or CPU or read or write thresholds. Um, but another new uh, benefit of the uh, full product with Performance Advisor is the query plans view. Um, because we're collecting query plans automatically 24-7 with our top SQL analysis, we're also keeping track of the history of the plans themselves. So I can go to any time frame and see what plans were being used at that time and identify where those problem ones may be. Um, I'm looking at a normalized view right now and I see a, a in fact, uh, pretty quickly I can identify where I have uh, some bookmark lookup operations uh, in this place uh, at this point, and I can expand to see the individual uh, statements and plans that were used. The uh, plan history allows me to see how often these plans are used, how effective are they, um, are, have there been any recompiles, any changes that might have impacted the effectiveness of the plans and how these different queries are running. I can scroll across here and you see quite a bit of information just on the types of operations that are associated with the plan. Now it turns out in this case uh, that I have actually all, all three of those plans each have a bookmark lookup operation, but I can also pretty quickly see that this bottom one um, really has quite a bit more activity associated with it, much more intensive uh, than the top two. It's probably the biggest offender that I, I'd likely want to focus on. So at this point, if I want, I can click on the View button here at the, on the side that will actually launch that query analysis. And uh, at this point, it should look pretty familiar um, with what we've already been looking at within the, the Plan Explorer, the free tool. So now this is built in with Performance Advisor, all this information collected automatically, where with the free tool, we allow you to import the Plan XML that you already have by whatever means, Management Studio and so forth. Um, notice you can also retrieve the, the plans from within the, the tool, either an estimated or actual plan. Well, here I have the plan that I've identified that I, um, looks like my biggest offender that I might want to uh, optimize. I can see my bookmark lookup uh, is there. And go to that same query columns view that we were looking at uh, before with the other plans with Aaron. Um, now another benefit of the, the full product, because the full product has some add-ins that tie in specifically to Management Studio, um, and that's really the only reason it's not in the free tools, is you need those add-ins that are provided with the, the full product. At this point, I can see the bookmark lookup and the associated columns and indexes. If I want to make any changes at this point, I can actually just right-click and select the uh, index properties and 
bring that screen up tied into Management Studio and make those modifications. If I want to decide that I do want to include those columns, uh, make them part of the actual index, or create new indexes, again, obviously, after carefully considering you know, all the facts, what's needed, uh, the impact those indexes may have, but I have the ability to jump in, and of course, it helps to make sure that I am modifying the proper index as well. So I can actually go from the standpoint of starting from that broad server overview with the dashboard, identify where, you know, when those, those queries were executing that likely could benefit from some optimization, jump in, analyze the query plan using all the, the different techniques and features that Aaron's shown us, jump in here and actually make those modifications and, and hopefully fix that problem and, and see a performance a benefit uh, for the, going on in the future for when that query runs. Um, some other things, that's a plan that I brought up here. Uh, let me bring up a, another plan that shows some other features that are a benefit of the free product. Um, again, the same type of information we've, we've been looking at, my plan diagram at the bottom, but I want to actually um, bring your attention to the statements tree here at the top. Um, this is, again, something that's unique and really is only available when you're doing continuous monitoring like Performance Advisor is. Uh, and the statement and the plan that we're looking at here isn't just some random query that was run against my server, um, but if you look, we actually have a while loop with multiple inserts, kicking off dynamic SQL, um, which kicks off another stored proc, followed by nested dynamic SQL that finally resulted in this query that we are looking at the plan diagram here and that we can verify is really um, responsible for the bulk of the cost of this entire stack here. Um, we provide the, the logic and we have the intelligence built into the full product to show you that entire stack. This query, if it's something that you detected through a profiler trace, you'd see the query, you'd really have no idea where it came from. We actually can show you that it was just this one instance of this one generation of this nested dynamic SQL um, that actually resulted in all that and give you that complete picture. Um, just a, a benefit of having that continuous uh, monitoring with the product. And the same thing I mentioned going to the top SQL view as well. Let me uh, jump back over to my original uh, server that we we're looking at and bring up the, the top SQL view. Just in general, top SQL, as I mentioned before, is defined as any statement that runs beyond a duration CPU or read or write threshold uh, as you define that. So these will be continuously monitored and uh, displayed here under the, the completed queries pane that I've, I've highlighted for either in real time, basically showing you a rolling last 10 minutes of any of those queries that have been detected, along with historically, either by dragging and dropping in the dashboard and jumping into Top SQL as we were looking at before, or with any of our panes from here specifying a start and end date and time and jumping right to it, I can see what were those Top SQL statements that were executing at that time. And notice again, I have that view button if I want to jump in and do the query analysis from the Top SQL pane, I can do that as well. Additionally, some new functionality that was introduced uh, early in version 6 uh, is the running queries pane now. So those queries, as they run, as soon as they exceed those thresholds that are defined, will show up here as well. So you can see not just completed queries after the fact, but if there's something out there right now that's either responsible for um, some resource bottlenecks or being impacted by that, you can easily spot that as it's going on out there and, and take that type of action. And beyond just basic uh, queries themselves, just one other tab I wanted to go ahead